Hey, welcome to Mike the Baptist. What's up? What's up? Uh, this is. I'm here today with my friends Jason Riccardi, preacher type guy, friend, but a preacher type guy. Sure. You can be two. You can be both things at once. <laughs> and there you are being it right there. <laughs> anyway, welcome back. Good to be back. H.D. Jones. Good to be here. Also friend. Mother from another brother type guy. <laughs> so our preacher isn't a preacher type though? Well, you know. Did I not say he was a preacher type? You did not. Well, he's he's sort of not, but <laughs> <laughs> he are one, but you know, you know what I'm saying. I, yes, you know, I do. I don't think you would disagree with me. Mm-mm. Anyway, good to have you back. I'm Mike the Baptist. This is Mike the Baptist, and we're glad you're back. Hey, we have food. We have a food review at the end of this program. Pretty excited about that. Oh, my gosh. It's been a while because we used to really, you know, we weren't begging. We were just pointing it out that we tried to get a is that food not review. The actual thing we were doing. I mean, it yeah. feels an awful lot like that was the actual but thing. But you don't we want to say that. Church people don't. They hide their begging. Wow, we couch it in religious terms. Exactly. We're now, trying I don't to even think we were feed the hungry using, using religious know? terms back then. We were just trying to get some <laughs> snacks in here to conviction. Conviction. Well, so uh, Margie Mahar is a friend of ours from the church we go to, and she. Uh, felt like she should provide us something to uh, help us get that food review what a back nice up and lady running. She is. What a nice lady! Now, it's my understanding that these are molasses cookies. Well, listen, let me just tell you. Several years ago, the Archway Cookie Company, you yes, could buy these yes. packages of soft molasses yeah. cookies. Oh, they're they're awesome. I could eat a whole package of them if you didn't stop me, and they were so good. And when I heard that she was making homemade molasses cookies. I, I may have passed out. I'm not sure, but I got really excited. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. And at the end of today's program, we're going to uh, have a food review on Margie Mahar's uh, molasses cookies. And I'm guessing it'll be a good review, but we'll wait and see. That's not how reviews work. You we'll don't... see in the middle of the diabetic coma what happens. <laughs> exactly. Sort so excitement that. changes uh, through different ages of your life, right? Yes. You're excited about cookies yes. and, you know, it's as exactly. a younger child, I was excited more about like a motorcycle ride or yeah. you know roller coaster or something like no, that. No food will do it now. Oh, I bet yeah. I bet a cookie would have done it for you back then too. Cookies were good uh, then too. You know they were. I do appreciate hands down the best manufactured cookie that you can get from the store. Yep. Nutter butters. Nutter butters. It, they're so good. So back in the day, my wife, when the kids were all little, their their uh, reward for being good in the grocery store. Is that she would take them by, and they could look at the cookies. They didn't get a cookie; just got to look at the cookie. That's you know, not a reward. That's she, punishment. She told that I think on this program yes, not long ago, crazy. and I was, it, I, I, I was listening to her say that, and I'm thinking, is she saying what I'm hearing yes, her say? They got to look at the cookies. <laughs> that's not a reward. That's punishment. That's so good. They were excited about it. That's hilarious. But low, anyway, low expectations in our house. I, I have high expectations <laughs> for these molasses cookies, and. Uh, I can't wait. Let me just get you one now. No, no, no. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm going to stay. You know me. Okay. Play by the rules. Yep. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Thin Mint. Um, well, thin Mint's pretty good. Yeah. I don't. I never really got carried away about the Girl Scout cookies either. The Samoas are really good. I do, I do like those. And then, uh, was it the Dosey Doughs that they're like the Nutter Butter? Okay. Anyway, stay tuned. The end of the program. Margie Mahar's Molasses Cookie Food Review. Famous or infamous? We'll yes. let you know. When the Mahars first started coming to our church, their last name was confusing. So I developed a way for Margie and her husband to tell people how to say their name because we're Southerners, and so we have a certain dialect. So I told I told Margie and him both, what you need to do is tell people the way to pronounce your last name is like Mahars on fire, Mahar. So Mahars on fire. Okay, it was funnier in my head. Uh, so, www.mikeofaptist.com. do appreciate that attempt at levity. Yeah, thank you. I have to look up levity, but I'll do that later. But anyway, uh, go to the website, uh, pilfer around, uh, send us an email. Pilfer? You want them to steal things? No, no, no. Look, in Arkansas, pilfer is what my uh, great aunt Opal did. When, when Tom and Opal would come to the house, she wouldn't even – she'd say hi to you, but she wouldn't stop walking. She'd go back and pilfer through your house. She'd go look all through your house. I thought you was going to say, like, she handed somebody an aspirin. They said, what's that pilfer? That goes right uh, along with my hair's on fire. Right. Uh, you're welcome. But no, pilfer, where I'm from, means you're just snooping nosy. around. Yeah, you're nosy. And then I moved to Tennessee, and I say pilfer a couple of times, and people, I thought I was going to be arrested. They said, that means stealing. No, it's not stealing. 
Anyway, what were we talking about? It uh, was probably really important. Email at Mike the Baptist. How do we get to pilfer? Oh, go to the website and pilfer yeah, around. Yeah. But then send us an email. Comments at MikeTheBaptist.com. Uh, one of our uh, In Your Audi questions today comes from an email, and uh, we'll get to that. You two are welcome, if you're listening, to send us one. You know, on the front porch today, uh, I've been reminiscing about childhood again. I think it's always fun to do that. Uh, it's not fun, but most of the time it's usually fun to do that, and I thought uh, it'd be neat to talk about, uh, you know, when you have big family gatherings, and all your cousins and your relatives and your aunts and uncles and everybody kind of gets together and comes around. I thought it would be nice to talk about uh, what the kids do during that time. You know, all the old people, it's kind of like the Charlie Brown movie. They're all over there. and You hear them talking, but you can't keep up because the, the old people all talk at once across each other. And uh, But the kids, it's like they have their own world. You know what I'm saying? And... Uh, like, like when I was a kid and we had these big Thanksgiving gatherings and uh, <coughs> all those boys usually played football. Mm-hmm. And especially in the dead of winter on a sunny day, it was a great time to go outside and play football. At that time, it seemed like the house I grew up in, which is where the family came because I was raised by my grandparents, it seemed like it was the length of a football field out there outside the kitchen. Uh, in fact, it was only about the length of the room we're in. <laughs> You know, years later going there thinking, we used to play a whole football game right there. But we all the boys would get together and play football. We would have these great, tremendous football games and get incredibly dirty and filthy and then come in the house and all the parents are raring and going on about how you're tracking stuff in. But it was a really good time. Uh, We did that. And then uh, at the area I lived in, my great-grandparents lived about a mile away. There were three or four country stores within walking distance. So we were we were like a tribe of hoodlums anytime we would all get together because we would, you know, we'd do our thing around the house. But then at some point, we would inevitably walk over the hill to the great-grandparents' house where there were hogs, chickens. They raised rabbits, cattle. There was everything over there, and we were into it all. And then we would roam around to these country stores which back in those days, on the way walking to the country store, you could pick up a few pop bottles, which when you got to the store were worth a nickel apiece. Huh. So 15 cents then would get you a candy bar and something else. So it's just good times, a lot of fun times. Uh, to end my portion of this storytelling, uh, my, my cousin Renee in Texas and I, uh, we're kind of adventurous. So years ago. Texas? Huh? Did you say Texas? Yes. You had a cousin named Texas? No, she's from Texas. Oh, okay. No. Wow. <laughs> no, no. That's like Renee. She's Renee from Texas. Renee in Texas and I. I was like, okay, wait, I missed something. <laughs> but anyway, she and I uh, decided that we all have kids. And some of us were beginning, their kids were going to get in to have kids. And we, we kind of decided that we should have a big family uh, reunion. So these kids, these extended family kids, can get to know each other just a little bit like we did when we got together and played those big football games and stuff. So we, we put one together. Jason, it was at, uh, we, we rented the big lodge at uh, Shepherd of the Ozarks. Yeah. And you're familiar with that. I remember that place. been yeah. there. So we rented the big building. There was 60-something of us. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there were That's more that came. That's about the limit of what that thing fits, isn't it? Yeah, it holds about 60 people. But there were more came from uh, different parts of the state for the day, day events. But anyway, it was a great reunion. But at some point during that reunion, all of us boys that used to have those football games decided, you know what would be great? And it was Thanksgiving, that first one we had. We thought it would be great to uh, replicate one of those old football games. So sure enough, we went out there in front of that big lodge out in that big open uh, field in front of it. And we had uh, new younger uh, relatives uh, that we got included to show them how this works. So we had a big football game, just like it was so much fun. It was great. Until my cousin Keith, who was a really good athlete all of his life, decided, I think he was, I think he was in his 40s at this time, decided to dive for a catch. Mm. Mm. And I think it took him a year and a surgery or two to get over the <laughs> what he reaped from that. And it was just funny that. Did he tear a rotator cuff? What did he do? I don't remember if it was his knee or his shoulder. 
but he really messed one of them up and mm. it was uh it was funny but not funny i just had achilles surgery none of that's funny to me no it's not funny it's not humorous funny it's just no no, no. i'm just like I, I that's a trigger word for me now is surgery yeah i don't i'll get you some kleenex in a minute or something yeah. but i understand but anyway so jason yeah what your family used to do there well uh i do have this one memory of when i was a little kid and uh we went and had this big family gathering. It was not at one of the relatives' houses. It was somewhere else. And so new place. We're all having fun, running around. Kids are having fun. And family gatherings were pretty big when I was growing up. You know, they weren't 60 or anything like that. But it was just my dad's side of the family. And he was one of um, five kids. And, and their kids had kids and, and all that stuff. So a bunch of people were running around. I think there may have been some friends as well. So the, the kids were getting bored. So we started to play hide-and-go-seek. And, and I am pretty good at hide-and-go-seek. Like, I work as a student minister, and so there was a time when we went to Gatlinburg, and uh, they could not find me in a cabin. And uh, I had put myself, you know, those vanities that are just, they're really small. They're only like one big, just enough room for the sink, and oh, there's yeah. not much space on the side. Right. I don't even know that it had drawers. Um I was able to wedge myself in there with my head on one side of the sink under the cabinet, my knees on the other side. And uh, I had my phone and I was just texting the students, taunting them the entire time. And I even had some students walk into the the room and say, well, where's Jason at? And you're like, did you check the cabinet? No, nah, it's too small. He won't be able to fit in there. And I was in, I was in there and two or three times they came into that room looking for me, couldn't find me. And eventually I was like, all right, I'm, I'm cramped. I got to get out. So I'm good at hide and go seek. And Apparently, that started when I was very young, so I uh, must have been like five or six or something like that. So we're playing hide-and-go-seek, and I climb under the stairs, and there's some of the the lattice board on the side of the stairs, and I climb in there, wedge myself in there. Nobody could see me. They're running around playing hide-and-go-seek. Eventually, the kids get tired playing hide-and-go-seek, and they haven't found me. They go on to do something else, and I get tired of waiting, thinking we're still playing the game, and I fall asleep. And I don't know how long I was out, but when I woke up, I got out from underneath of the staircase. And uh, <laughs> then my parents found me, and they're like, dude, where have you been? We've been looking for like an hour. And I was like, oh, it was, uh, it was a good nap. It was a good time. So <laughs> we used to play hide-and-go-seek. That was one of those things we would do. Uh, yeah. I just remember that moment in time. It's pretty funny. Was this Texas you're reminiscing yeah. about? Yeah. It's hot in Texas. It is hot in Texas. Yep. Yeah. I just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> it was hot here the the last several weeks. It it's kind been of cooled hot down a little bit this week, but yeah. Uh, Renee, the same cousin I was talking about, I went to Texas and sang graveside. Her funeral was like 140 degrees, yeah. and I had a suit on. Uh huh. It was hot. Okay, that's the end. No, well, you brought up weddings and you brought up heat. We went to a wedding, and I swear it was literally the shortest wedding I've ever been to. It was outside, and it was at the peak of the the heat and humidity, so it's like six. Uh, in the evening and it was probably still like 95 with 120 percent humidity if that's even possible and i kid you not from the time that they started ushering people the the family members in to sit down until the time that we were watching the bride and groom walk down the aisle inside of 10 minutes wow it was the shortest wedding ever and the uh minister said to the well not a minister but the one who was presiding over the wedding as soon as they get inside he's like and you're welcome you're welcome you're welcome because <laughs> he knew it was hot and did the marriage last <laughs> uh, this was literally just like last weekend oh okay yeah so so far so far <laughs> yeah i think they're still on their honeymoon i hope it still lasted interesting okay hd uh what happened at your family gatherings when you're what did all you kids do right at your, at your gathering so there was seven of us jones grandkids and similar to y'all, we'd, we'd have to go outside. Grandparents' house was too small. And back in the day, parents ate first. I mean, kids just went out and played, and we got what was left over. So we'd all be outside, and we'd play. I remember we had a purple Nerf football. And we'd play football, girls, guys, and probably tackle, you know, because the older kids wanted to hurt the younger kids. Exactly. And then, yep. then we got tired of that. We'd... Uh, <clears throat> We pick apples and throw them at cars when they're coming down the road, yeah. and uh, then we then we go. Did you uh, ever make contact with the cars? Oh yeah, you know. And then people slamming on their brakes, and you're having to come up with like, 
<laughs> Our, there was a dog across the street. We were trying to hit the dog. I swear, you know, uh, and parents are inside like, what are y'all doing? Uh, but yeah, then uh, climbing in the corn crib. Uh, yeah, just doing all that, all that fun stuff. Country kid stuff. Country kid stuff. Yeah. You know, in, uh, in front of my house, I grew up uh, at in the, in the kind of driveway that came off the highway and up around to the side of our house, there were these three oak trees that had grown together. So it had this massive trunk that split into three other trunks, and there was enough room in there where a couple of kids could kind of get in there and throw stuff at cars as they went by right down under yeah. under us at the highway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did that pretty regularly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're right. You go back to those places now because I remember at my granddad's house, the, the where you backed up to go back on the road was the touchdown. You know, it was like, and you think, Man, could somebody actually throw a ball this far? Yeah. Like, golly, now you can throw a ball so much further than anything. Isn't, it was isn't so that big. funny? Yeah, I thought it was so big and yep. um, took so long to play those games. And like you said, come in, somebody would be crying and muddy and dirty. And There's always a feud. Yeah. Some kids always then get we, into it. Somebody eat, cried. Then we'd eat dinner. That's when the game's over. And all yeah. of us fought over. There was one. Grandma didn't. I don't know if she had any a complete set of anything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there was like a Bugs Bunny uh, cup that somebody had gotten at Arby's. Right. And then there was one. It was a little yellow boot. It was a yellow boot. And we'd always – we fought for the yellow boot. You know? To drink out of the boot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did she have uh, Did she have any of the uh, dishes that came out of boxes of laundry detergent? I don't remember those. You don't remember those? Uh, that's a thing? Oh, my gosh. When I was growing up, it was a thing that uh, when you went to the grocery to get your groceries every week or two. You would buy a box of laundry detergent or uh, dishwashing mm. uh, crystals, the powder stuff. And you sell it in these big boxes. And it was a thing that some of those companies, for a while, they would put a dish mm. or a coffee mug or a saucer. It was brilliant because you wanted a whole set of yeah. those. So you kept buying their product mm. until you get it. And people would have these whole sets of dishes. And, isn't that funny? Maybe we should try that with Mike the Baptist. Well, well, we do we have a cups. product that people can buy? We got these cups. If Margie Mahar's cookies are good enough, we put a cup in there with them <laughs> and just start selling to people. www.mikethebaptist.com <laughs> slash merchandise. Okay, big fun. Uh, you know those stories, once I get started, could go on and on and on oh, about... Yeah. about uh, did you all mash lightning bugs on your jeans? Because we caught lightning bugs. Accidentally, maybe. Oh, we did it on purpose. You can catch a lightning bug, and then you could just smash it and smear that glowy stuff on your jeans. It's like this glow in the dark. It's really neat. (laughs) We also taped uh, grasshoppers to bottle rockets. That's something else I highly (laughs) would encourage anybody to try because... I mean, you never really see what happens to the grasshopper, but it's always entertaining to me just thinking, I wonder what that thing thinks <laughs> when that thing takes off. <laughs> so, just to... I'd never in my life thought about taping a grasshopper to a, listen, a bottle rocket. Listen, I used to stick scotch tape, hold them right on there. Yeah, I used to and stick firecrackers they freak, inside they, the anvil. They freak out immediately. They start spitting that brown. We called it tobacco did juice. Y'all get like a, did y'all have out. like colored chicks at Easter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you could buy them. Yeah. Uh, you could buy bunnies, too. They were colored. They were dyed. Yes. And I remember they got yeah. me one, and we tied a string to his leg and put a peg out in the yard so he could peck around <laughs> in the circle. And I think I came back sometime, and the string was there, but he was gone. Pretty sure the cat got him. Uh, yes. Something ate that yeah. thing. And June bugs. You tie a June bug to a, a thread. Did y'all ever do that? Uh-uh. What? Really? So next June, I think they're gone already now, but. Do they even have June bugs in Tennessee? Oh, yeah. Catch a June bug. Their legs won't come off easy. So <laughs> you can tie, you can actually tie a little string to their leg and you can let them. It's like the, it was like the pre uh, remote control airplane for kids. You, you have a June bug on a string right. and you fly it around. <laughs> okay, it's Arkansas. <laughs> this conversation got weird real yeah. quick. <laughs> but it was good. Uh, and uh, I can already tell that I might want to revisit this at some point. Peter, I, Peter might be coming after you. Yeah, I got a, I got a shirt to show him. Yeah. Okay, so good talk. We'll take a break. Come back. Talk about some stuff we found in the Bible. Do you listen to or watch Mike the Baptist? Do you wear clothes? If so, we've got some great news. 
t-shirts, and hoodies are now available at MikeTheBaptist.com. Just visit MikeTheBaptist.com, click on the merchandise link, and you'll find high-quality tees, hoodies, and even onesies for the babies in a variety of colors, all with the Mike the Baptist logo and familiar sayings from the program. Mike the Baptist is a true labor of love. No one has to pay to listen or watch the program, but Mike and the crew have to eat. So a portion of each sale of a t-shirt or hoodie goes to Mike's local Kroger, Walmart, or electric utility. It's kind of simple like that. In order to keep the program free, we have to generate a bit of income to pay the bills. When you make a purchase, you're not only doing the world a favor by wearing clothes, you're helping keep the messages of Mike the Baptist on the air. Thanks for helping out, and thanks so much for being involved in spreading the good news. What a great planet. Hey, we're back. Jason, you got a lot of knowledge in your head up there. Uh... See? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us something interesting about the Bible that you find personally interesting, not, you know, big educational type uh, liturgy. Is that a word? Liturgy. I don't know. You probably should buzz yourself on that word. Liturgy. Liturgy is a word, yes. It is. I'm going to buzz it anyway because we don't use it much. <laughs> Remind me that that's there. In case we get that's too spiritual. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Jason, tell us something interesting about the Bible. Um, Ezekiel is the book that I just finished up reading today. And it's one of those things that's uh, it's kind of trippy at times. Uh, some of the things that Ezekiel talks about in there, uh, if I remember correctly, there's a reference in there that uh, a lot of people have taken to mean he was describing a helicopter. Obviously, millennia before helicopters were invented. Um, there's just some really interesting stuff in there. And you're like, you know, God was speaking to a prophet. God did pull back the curtain for him, let him see some things. And just kind of wonder sometime down the road when I'm in heaven, I get to ask God questions. If I even care about asking God this question, but it would be kind of interesting to say, okay, so what was Ezekiel seeing in some of those visions and some of the things that was going on? That is interesting. God right. might be busy, but maybe Ezekiel will be over there. <laughs> you can yeah. just ask him, let me draw you yeah. a picture. Is this what you're talking about? You know, a, a friend of mine uh, did a, series in an in an old Sunday school class of mine one time on Revelation and he, he got to the part where there were all these descriptions going on about these things flying in the air and all and he kind of got to equating it to if you think about like these Apache helicopters and things nowadays. Mm -hmm. I'd never heard heard that quite like that before. It was real interesting to consider. Of course nobody really you know you don't really know but I can see how if you're trying to explain something way down into the future that uh, somebody in those days not having seen an Apache helicopter could be describing something similar, but it was just uh, real interesting. Neat that you brought that up. Speaking of stuff that you find in the Bible, what do you all want to talk about? Well, this week we've been reading about the Israelites have come to the end of their wandering in the wilderness and they're wanting to go across into the promised land. They know God's promised them all that, but they get the report from the spies, and then they start really just kind of backing up, going, well, maybe we should go back home. Let's just go back to Egypt. And really the focus of the passage of Scripture, I think, is really about fear. You know, do we have fear or do we have faith? And, you know, thinking thinking through that, why do, why do we go back to stuff even though it wasn't good for us, why do we go back to stuff and hold on to those things instead of going forward to the better things that God has for us? I don't know. I, I think the word you used was fear. Um, and I'll be honest. We are where we are because whether we like the circumstances or not, we're comfortable where we are because it's known. And so... It's a it's a dangerous thing in a lot of ways to step into something new and, and try something different to to do something different than what you're familiar with what you're comfortable with. It's, it's kind of like a pair of shoes, right? You know, you could get to a point where a pair of shoes you could slip it on, it's real comfortable, but the uh, the sole's wearing off and uh, it's getting threadbare at the bottom, and and it's really actually not good for your foot at that point in time. But it's real easy to slip on, and it it just feels comfortable because it's what you're used to when. In reality, it's actually causing damage to your foot. And you put on a new pair of shoes, and man, it, it's just not comfortable there for a couple of weeks. 
And after a while, a couple of weeks go by, if you're just consistently wearing those shoes, then it gets comfortable and, and that becomes your new normal. But I think that's a good analogy for why we stay in problem areas of our life. It's because we're, we're comfortable with it. Even though we know it's not bad or not good for us, that we know it's bad for us, we're just, we're comfortable. We, we know what to expect. We know what's going to happen. And there's a, there's the momentary uh, excitement of where you're at and the enjoyment, pleasure of the, some of the things that you're doing. But in the long term, we just we know it's not good for us, but we just stay there because it's comfortable. Isn't it funny, though, uh, how you talk about you go back because it's comfortable, but uh, in talking about things you do in your, in your life that you know are going to be uncomfortable – you even go back to doing those, knowing it's going to be uncomfortable, but there's something familiar about it, and you just let yourself go through that. What's well, di- it's just the, a different form of comfort. It it may be painful, but it it's, it's familiar. It's familiar, and that's a form of comfort. And so you don't have to think about did y'all it. Have, yeah. Did y'all have people in Arkansas that you just looked at their life and you're like, okay, this lady over here has been married to this alcoholic for 15 years, and he's beat on her and cussed her and everything, and all of a sudden. She finally works up the gumption to leave him, and dad gum if she doesn't turn around and marry another alcoholic. Uh, yeah, I think that happens. And you stop and you everywhere. go, you go. Why would you go back to those things that are painful? You know, and that's what the Israelites. I mean, they're sitting here and they know what they went through in Egypt. This is that first generation. They know, and they've seen what God's done for them. And yet they come to this end of the wilderness, even, and they're like. I don't know, man. Maybe we should just go back home. Oh, I was thinking about uh, well, Jason was talking about uh, giving that great theological explanation of why we might slip back at being comfortable, et cetera, et cetera. I was over here thinking the whole time. I have a simpler explanation for why I do that. I'm just stupid. <laughs> I don't and think it, that's it re- true at all. Well, it, I'm stupid in the sense that it relates to what I was talking about earlier. That even the things you know. That if you fall back and do it's it's not gonna it's not gonna feel good it's, you're gonna feel bad but you because it's so familiar and easy you don't have to think about it, you do it anyway I'm just stupid sometimes that way yeah that's all I was gonna share on do that you ever, do you ever see uh, James Gregory where he talks about the fat relative that's sitting over there going oh I don't know oh, why I yes. ate that again yeah. Yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of what we do to ourselves isn't it you know it's like again we go back to those things that. That aren't even necessarily comfortable. We know they're bad for us, but we do it. How many diabetics? Well, let me have some of that, even though it's probably going to shoot my sugar way up. You know, we 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 just dance around the border of I know I'm supposed to do this, but I want to do this. Yeah, and that's where I think that's where you see Israel. Um, just give a great illustration of who we are as people. We trust in the past more than we trust in the future and we're afraid sometimes to step out um, because we really don't honestly we really don't trust God we want to be in control we want to be in control of the situation and we know that we we've made it through that part so let's go back to there uh, humans are control freaks even if you don't think you are when it you know you, you want to know everybody wants to know you ever make people that go to the same place for vacation every year oh yes yeah. And I always kind of go, well, don't you want to try something new? No. But they just, they like, they like that familiar yeah. place where they know where to go and what to do. And I'm a little like that, but I like a little adventure too. Well, yeah, a little, little variety doesn't hurt anything. Yeah, I was actually also reading in Psalms today, uh, Psalm 106, and starting with verse 6 and then ending up in, uh, what is it, verse 40 or something like that. Um, it it just describes all the stupidity that Israel had done, all this rebellious actions. So it goes on for 38 verses talking about how bad Israel is. And then at the end of it, it's like, and yet, God shows compassion, God relents, God loves. And it's just amazing to me that even though we fall into stupid patterns, habits, acti- actions, and all these different things that are just not good for us, they're self-destructive and the dishonoring to God, and yet, even at the end of that, that's just who our God is. He is a good God that loves, compassion, relents, um, 
reminds us of his covenant, uh, his commitment to us. Not because there's anything good in us, obviously, because there's 38 verses that precede this saying how dumb we are. But mm-hmm. then it just goes in there and it says, but God. And I, I think that's that's a beautiful thing about the God that we serve. Well, isn't it, isn't it hilarious that uh, we're so stupid that we have to gather up and go to church two or three times every week and be reminded of the same exact thing every time we walk in the building. And then we walk out and it's like, it's gone somewhere for a little bit. Isn't that funny? But that's how we are. How do, how do you guys, uh, how do you shy away from fears and step out in faith and do things that God's called you to do? <laughs> well, let me share an example. <laughs> Jump right uh, in there. Like those sound effects. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so back in, I think it was December, I, I ran what's called a Spartan race. Um, back in October of last year. Loved it. It's a it's like a six mile obstacle course for adults. It's just fun, you know? And Exactly. I'm getting weird looks from people. You That's know? what we were thinking. Um, <laughs> it, it's just, I enjoyed it a lot. It was a great de-stressor in the middle <clears throat> of my upward football season, right, as that was kind of closing. Uh, it just kind of got me out there doing some stuff, enjoying the outdoor air. Love it. It was so much fun. And I enjoyed it so much so that when they were running a special, I think it was uh, a reasonably percent discount off of the full price. And I was like, I I think I'm going to do another one again. And it it's late at night. It's probably like 11. And I think the cutoff deadline is, is 12 o'clock at night. And I, I didn't have much time to think about it. And I'm like, oh, I really enjoyed that. I think I want to do it again. And I, I kind of felt checked in my spirit. I kind of felt like God said, yeah, don't, don't do that. And I was like, oh, but I, it was so much fun. And, you know, there's no reason for me not to. And I kind of talked myself into it. And, you know, fast forward three months after that, uh, I tear my Achilles. It wasn't even three months. It was two months after that. I tear my Achilles and have to have surgery. And that's a surgery that can go upwards of a year before you're really kind of back to normal. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm. It's on the. it's on the line there where I could physically be able to do it, but it probably should probably give shouldn't. it some more time. Yeah. Yep. And so now I've got to scramble to either just eat that cost or – Sell it to somebody and let me go uh, ahead and predict he's not going to run this way. Sarah, Sarah's going <laughs> to yeah. step Sarah's in. Already gonna, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking that's probably yeah. correct. Yeah, she's tired yeah. of driving your honey around because he's yeah. thinking about it. You can see it all so over. And you paid somebody to go. It was swim fun. In the mud. Yes. Hey, I've got I've got a farm. You can come over. You can give me a hundred dollars anytime you want to come over and wallow around in the mud. I did 20. not pay that much. You know, twenty. Yeah, just give I'll me fifty bucks. I'll give you a um, discount. But yeah, you can move so, big rocks. You can move big rocks around. Roll roll some timbers around, and that doesn't sound like as much mud. fun. That sounds. I'll, I'll time. That you. sounds like work. I'll time you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Why were you telling that story? Uh, well, the, where I was going with that is, um, <laughs> it just dawned on me that you know you, you you have to be tender and sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and then you have to be willing to actually pay attention to the Holy Spirit. Gotcha. Yeah. Because you that little thing right there, uh, I'll probably end up having to eat some costs there i may be able to sell the ticket but i'll probably end up having to eat some costs there. oh but you had mentioned that he had kind of nudged you earlier if i had that. just listened yeah i would have saved myself some issue down the road hmm. and i think that's like us in general if we would just listen isn't it like your kids he would though? silence your fears in the story over and over too uh, with kids when you get on down and you're get a few years on you and you look back and say why didn't i just do that so then you start telling your kids and they don't listen to you yeah it's the same story over and yeah. over but it's uh at our age we're going you need to invest in your 401k early <laughs> right, right? Yeah. yeah nobody ever does no it's just interesting it's the same story um I invested in my 401k early, but it wasn't very much. And then there was a long time period where I didn't. So it didn't do me much. Watching good. it go up and down the roller coaster. Yeah. Isn't it good, though, uh, to know that you know you're stupid, but it's covered? You know, it used to be, I guess, when you're early on in this Christian thing, you think uh, you kind of look at that wrong. You can you can real easily get to thinking, well, I'll just go ahead and do whatever I want to do anyway because I can just be forgiven for it. But the longer you're involved in this, the more it dawns on you that you're grateful 
that your stupidity is covered, and that that actually makes you not want to be as stupid. Mm -hmm. So the good news I keep listening to in all this is if you just leave the story where we got it right here, <laughs> we're just doomed because we're just going to be stupid for us for life. But there's something to cover that, correct? Well, the good, yeah, the good news about even the Israelites, there's going to be some that won't experience the fun of the promised land. But God was committed to get his people to the promised land regardless of how they performed in the wilderness. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of like us. He is committed to uh, to get us all the way there, hmm. you know. Um, life can go a lot easier when we quit looking in the rearview mirror and keep trusting him. Somebody said one time, the rearview mirror only shows, it's like a very small portion of what the front windshield shows. Hmm. You know, and, but we spend most of our time in life looking at what's behind us instead of thinking about what's out in front of us. But God is committed to us that he's going to get us there. You know, Paul says, I'm convinced that he who started a good work in you will commit it or he will complete it against the day of Christ. And so, you know, that doesn't give us a, a right to be lazy or just apathetic, but it is comforting, isn't it, Michael? Oh, you? yes. Yeah. You know, despite my stupidity, God's going to get me there. Right. It's good news to know that my salvation is not on me. Yeah. Yep. I would say so. Yeah, because uh, you and I and HZ would be in a world of mess. Yeah. Because I know all three of us. But and, the, uh, the overwhelming story about the Israelites, I mean, right after they walk through the Red Sea, let's go back. Let's go back. They always want to go back. And it just it just amazes me. And again, I can see it in other people's lives a whole lot more than I can see it in my own. But how much does God have to do to show himself worthy and trustworthy? Like, you know, stepping out in faith with God is a whole lot more uh, fun and entertaining than going back to this same old stuff we mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. What is it? The Bible say a dog returns to his own vomit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's a grotesque thing but it's a reality that which he vomited out he'll go back and eat it again it's gonna make you sick again hey it's a big old fun world out in front yeah. of you yeah. and uh i've said it a lot i'll say it again you, you're more free than you've ever been once you kind of get to looking that way Dude, than you of, used to be one of our guys from the hope center last night and i appreciated him so much um shared last night and he said the minute i got off my knees in my cell i was free as a bird even though I was still incarcerated. He said, but I'd go to gym as a free man. I'd go to lunch as a free man. Even though I'm in prison, mm -hmm. he said my heart was free. And I was like, man, that's a great analogy. That's pretty good. And that's like, coming from somebody who's in the middle yeah, of. Yeah, they've uh, been there. Yeah, in the middle of it right there. So I shared a, a simple story about how I said no when I should have listened to God and, and said, okay, I'll do what you want me to do. Do you guys have a story about a time in your lives where you did say yes to God? You felt God prompting you to do something and you did say yes. Well, I mean, I do, I do a lot of things just because I think God built me to create things. I mean, I think that's just what I'm supposed to do. So I have a lot of opportunities to create things. And I kind of I kind of view that anymore as that, well, like that freedom we're talking about. It used to be I would wonder why. But now I just wonder why not? Because uh I think I think I think he he builds you like he wants to build you. I didn't have anything to do with being built the way I'm built. I've come to terms with that. <laughs> it, it's not my Has fault. Has everybody else around you come <laughs> to terms with right. that? It's not my fault. So <laughs> I love that. So, so I'm looking out in front of yeah. my window. I'm not so afraid to uh, try things anymore because uh, I know that if it's something that he does not want me pursuing, if I'm out here on some new venture, if he doesn't want me, I have learned that he will he will cause me not to get very far with that if I'm listening. But the things that uh, do line up, I think, with what he wants for me, those things just kind of keep going. They just keep going. I, I think this podcast is one of those things. It's, you know, we've been in this two years or better, and I don't see any end to it anytime soon. It feels very comfortable. 
For those Phil. of you listening, he's not talking <laughs> about this individual podcast. Not this certain, certain one, but yeah, actually I am. Uh, I think he has allowed this to keep going because it's... Uh, no, I mean this episode. Yes, you're, you're not talking about there's no end well, this, this episode. episode too, this episode he's, will he's end, allowing just in it case to, you're wondering. going for a little bit, but... But that was a funny that was a funny thing because uh when Michael came to me and he's like, Hey, I wanna to talk to you about something. My wife had already been talking to me about we did the He Reads, She Reads yeah. Truth series and she was really enjoying listening to the podcast that they were doing on the scriptures that you were reading that day. And she's like, Have you ever thought about doing something like that? And I was like, you know, I don't I don't have the time, the technical expertise and then, you know, here comes Jackson going Hey, have you ever thought about it? And I'm like, okay, here we go. You yep. know, game um, on. Yeah, so it kind of works. Yeah, for me, it was COVID. When we went through COVID, I, I the first Sunday I preached to empty pews, I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. And uh, when we started doing stuff off the porch, I mean, golly, you talk about feeling like a goofball mm-hmm. standing out there by yourself. So people, different. People honking their horns at you and that kind of stuff. And it wasn't until, honestly, maybe two years after that that I found out that one of our deacon's child received Christ sitting in the parking lot. And I was like, okay, God, you you knew what we were supposed to be doing. I didn't like it. The circumstances were horrible, but God was still at work about it. So, you know, kind of like what you're saying, you don't have to be afraid of what's out in front of you. Um, it doesn't mean we can't plan, prepare, and right. all that stuff, but, you know, it's uh, it's kind of liberating. Yeah, you take a step. Yeah. You know, I'm I would venture to say, uh, none of the three of us when we started doing this particular thing envisioned it quite like it has been. In fact, when I first thought about it, I probably thought about it much as you had. Mm-hmm. This very serious theological minded, you know, really preachy kind of thing <laughs> that's, you know, had this great <laughs> message. That's what I'd originally kind of thought, but then the as we got ready to actually do it, I got to thinking, well, that's not what we all do when we're talking. We all just sit around and goof off and talk and laugh. But so many good things come out of those conversations. So, and so it's morphed into what it is, I don't think, by accident. You know, uh, I always look at, too, we're kind of being challenged right now to move to two worship services and two connect hours or Sunday school. And, you know, it's there's a little bit of fear in that, the unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, we're going to take a step and we're going to do it. And I told a guy the other day, I said, we can always go back. I mean, we can always go back to what we know. And so part of that is kind of cool. You just go, yeah, we're going to step out and see what happens. And if it fails, then we'll go, eh, that's not what we we're supposed to do. We'll go back and figure it out again. I figure he's got it covered. That's what I figure. You know, and sometimes God puts uh, the yes that you're supposed to do on your heart way before it actually happens. Um I've been at Temple for 11 years now almost, and I have always wanted to have a youth-led worship team. And there will occasionally be a student leading worship, and, and it's it's always good, always phenomenal. We've had some really good musicians over the years, but it was never really a youth team. Mm-hmm. And then in COVID, uh, had somebody come to me, and apparently they just had more spare time on their hands than uh, what they did before. And he's like, hey, uh, I think I'd like to do this. Is this something you'd be okay with? I'm like, dude, I've been praying about that for years. And so I think sometimes God puts a yes on your heart so that you can begin to make preparations for it and you can be ready for it when it comes. Hmm. And and now, you know, we've got, uh, when I watch the youth praise band practice, there's a kid that's not even quite in youth. He'll be in youth in, in a year or two, but he's he's in the drum cage and he's, hitting the button for the click track so he can get familiar with it. He's not in youth yet, but he's getting familiar with the process. We've got a kid in the back that will be, um, they're not looped into the actual sound system that everybody's hearing, but he's looped into his in-ear buds and he's able to hear himself play so that he can build confidence as he's playing. We've got another person on the keyboard, same thing. They're playing, but they're not actually being playing out loud, but they're getting confidence being on the stage. We've got four singers that are up there on a consistent basis and it's just it's fun to watch that happen but you've got sometimes put that yes on your heart so that you can be prepared for it when it happens it's like the the parable of the good samaritan you know the it's like a train ride at dollywood 
on the steam train. <laughs> well, okay. while Jason was talking, I was thinking this. <laughs> at Dollywood, I was thinking life is, is a lot like that train ride at Dollywood or Silver Dollar City for my friends uh, back up in the other direction. But you kind of anticipate, you hear that steam train. You know, you hear it in the distance and it's going around the mountains and making those sounds, you know, and you're anticipating that sometime during the day you're going to ride that train. And when you get on it, you can do you can do that train ride one of two ways. You can get on it and you could ignore everything going on until you get back to the station. Like that's your goal. I just want to get get the train ride, check it off the list. Or you can sit back and just relax. You don't have to be at the at the station real quick. In fact, if if you're too focused on that, you're going to miss all the pretty scenery along the way. So to me this whole thing about uh uh living it's kind of like that train ride. If there's not a lot going on in life, relax and look around. There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to be uh, happy about. And then you go through the city once in a while on your own train, and things get exciting for a while, but it's not always going to be that way. So I don't know why I was thinking about that, but I just had this picture of this nice train ride through Dollywood. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that because we don't know why you were thinking that either. Okay. Well. <laughs> But I have to share these things. Yes. That's what I'm no, here for. That's good. That's what a podcast is for. Got exactly. Cast it's good. It, God cast is it out there. God is as much about it, the good. journey as he is the destination. Because it, if it was only about salvation, we'd go to heaven as soon as we got saved. That's right? what I was trying to say. He's as that's much about the journey as he is the destination. He's got a he's got a path that he wants to take us through. And we we just get to experience it. He's the conductor. He's the one driving this train. And we get to experience a lot of cool things if we just follow him. Could you say, Jason? Uh, this is this is a little. It's not church words, but I just made a, a, a comparison here. Would you say it's a little like uh, instead of going back to the station if you get bored, just wait, just wait, because something else is going to something's coming and it's going to be good, and you're still going uh, to where you're trying to get to. Kind of like that. Sure. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> You don't have to totally agree, but what does all this have to do to somebody? Hey, you know how how you were saying that you it's like you, you think God puts the, the yes in you, and so you can be getting ready. Mm-hmm. Is He doing that to people that aren't saved even yet? Oh yeah, God is. The word is. Go ahead and buzz me already. God is sovereign and in control. Mm-hmm. It's not as if okay. where we are, what we're doing. And when we are in time, catches God off guard. God, uh, again, go ahead and buzz me. He ordains our circumstances mm. around us to bring us to a place where we are, A, ready to hear, uh, B, willing to accept. And, and then he's the one that creates that moment in time where we're just overwhelmed by his presence. And we say, I see. I was blind, but now I see. I was deaf, but now I hear. My heart was a stone and now it is a heart of flesh. And so God's the one that creates the opportunities for us to get to that place. Yeah, he's coming to you. I heard a guy the other day say, you know, we, we have this picture of God that just can't wait to cast people into hell. And he said, I really think what we're going to see in heaven is that we had to step over Jesus to get to hell. I mean, we, we really had to, we had to really mm-hmm. have to go out of our way not to see the love of God. And so, you know, if there's somebody listening that's kind of struggling with that, just know, even listening to this podcast, that's God ordaining that in your life to get your attention, uh, to call you to himself. And so, um, you know, the guy last night that gave his testimony, I loved what he said. I got down on my cell, in my cell, on my knees and cried out to God. How... How much easier can we explain what is salvation? Mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's all God wants. He wants you to cry out that you have a need for Him. Uh, it's my understanding if you do that, yep. He'll He'll follow up. Yep. He'll do it. Yep. Easy enough. Good enough. Take a break. Come back and play any rowdy. I don't see any need to keep babbling out there. Do you? No, that sounds was good. Hey, everybody, it's time to play America's almost favoritest new game show, Any or Audi, where we challenge our guests to figure out if a phrase we give them is actually in the Bible or out of the Bible. Sharpen your wits, guest. You're about to be in the hot seat of Bible stuff because you're the next contestant on Any or Audi. Here's Mike. 
Today is another one of those big days on uh, Mike the Baptist. We got some email from a listener. This listener happens to be the same one that is providing these molasses cookies coming up on the end. So she's uh, she's kind of the hero of this episode. She's the hero of a lot of things right now. She's got uh, sent us email. Always happy to get email. By the way, little reminder: send us some comments at Mike the Baptist. And um, I also appreciate she's come up with an in or outy question because yes, you know. We kind of get stale, just to be honest. Well, it's sorta. Like, it's yeah, kinda, you know, we we've cherry, is that what that smell is? We've cherry picked all the all the easy ones. So the easy ones are gone. Yep, yep. So so yeah, it's nice to nice to. Uh, and she picks a simple one, and and I like it. In fact, uh, I think I've even talked about this a time or two earlier. So here it is. I'll go first. I'm in the power seat first, and then I think Jason is going to be. So we have uh, two chances to make our pastor look really really bad today not bad you know what i'm saying you don't care <laughs> <laughs> is the word stupid in the bible the, clock, the <laughs> clock is running <laughs> clock is running so uh, oh no no it's not you, you can't talk. Have, yeah, i was gonna have a discussion about it <laughs> so immediately when you say the word stupid uh, uh-huh. a scene from the water boy it pops into my head is that another movie? I don't watch movies. It's another episode. movie that's a dumb Adam Sandler movie no. that spoke to my adolescence when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. But there's a scene in there where he's like, what, were you too, 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 too stupid? And uh, it's like, <laughs> all I can my remember mind think about is my scene. kids, you know, would run in and say, somebody said the S word, you know, and I was ready to whip somebody. And, <laughs> oh, it's just stupid. stupid. Okay, that's, <laughs> that is an S word, but not the S word. I had a teacher that the, the S word was suck. Like, for well, whatever now, reason, you can't they say did that not you like can't, that. What word. happened in America, like, sometime in the recent past, in the last 10 or 12 years, everybody got afraid of the word stupid. And it was like, don't teach your kids to say stupid. And, well, it's just a word, but, and it's not a it's not a cuss word. And we mean no harm. And apparently it could be in the Bible. Apparently it could be. But anyway, I just wonder, did y'all notice that? Yeah. Oh. Uh, dumb and stupid. It's like, don't say that. Why not? Okay. I'm through. Less intelligent. And the rest. <laughs> Rant over. <laughs> is the word stupid in the Bible? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Really? I mean, yeah. no ignorance is, and I think that's just a different translation of that word. So, you know. I, I think it's in reference to the idols. Um, call them stupid and mute and, and different things. I, I'm pretty sure it's in there. Probably a couple different translations. You know what's going to happen? We're going to lose. No. Oh. <laughs> this is going to this is going to unleash a whole new generation of young people that are listening right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who are just going to say it's okay to they're say not, stupid. They're not even TikTok and they're watching like the Baptist. Exactly. You know they are. There are other words in the Bible that we probably don't want our young people saying we. I'm positive there are. <laughs> like Jehoshaphat. Sure. Didn't that used to be a, a phrase? Yeah. Jumping Jehosh- yeah. Jehosh- Jehosh- Bugs Jehosh- Bunny. Yeah. Yeah. Bugs Bunny. That's where that came from. Yeah. Was that Elmer Fudd that did that? Could have been. Uh, what was the cowboy? Uh, oh. Jumping Jehoshi Fat. Wasn't it Elmer Fudd? No. no was what's the his name? Red. Uh, was yeah. it Red? Yeah, the chicken red. No, the cowboy had the big Sam. Yosemite uh, Sam. Yosemite. Yeah. Jumping Jehoshaphat. <laughs> I might need to say that Sunday just to see how Lisa signs jumping. Oh, Jehoshaphat. please that do. Would that would be fun. Awesome. Lisa is our For those of you uh, listening sign to the podcast, person. yeah, yes. she's sign language. <clears throat> yep. Which is always uh, <laughs> always fun with HD because <laughs> HD says things that aren't in the language. Yeah, exactly. And so it's always And then fun. he likes to point out to everybody in the audience or everybody in the congregation, hey, look, and this is, <laughs> let's see how she signs this. It's akin to uh, like a runner tripping over something, <laughs> but only different. She does it with her hands when she's trying to do HD. <laughs> and her, her face when she does that, too, she gets the best facial expressions. <laughs> Okay, is the word stupid in the Bible? Yes, according uh, I'm, to Jason. I'm pretty sure it's and in there. And if it's not, he's the stupid one. Are both of y'all an any? <laughs> I, I, I am an any, yeah. yeah. According to Margie Mahar, in the New King James Version, Proverbs 12, 1, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Dun, dun, dun. So, there you go. Thank you, Margie. Uh, yeah, that was a good thank one. Thank you. That yes. is a good one because... 
uh yeah that's a good one it's just one of those words you just kind of wonder should that be in there the bible's not always pg mm, no i mean that's still so PG. is it wrong to use that word if you're talking to yourself because i say that a lot come on stupid <laughs> no i don't think it's wrong <laughs> I, I do that too <laughs> i think if you was- use a word like that with bad intent it's wrong you shouldn't do that with any word but if you're just you know what is that old pastor you like to uh to say you are so dumb you are oh no that's the uh <laughs> that's the the meme of the guy that broke into a house who's that old pastor billy graham you are, you are so, so dumb <laughs> you are really really dumb i mean for real okay so y'all won yeah that's good jason challenges yeah okay well, it was hot last week, and so um, mm-hmm. boy, it's hot howdy. and humid, and boy, that got me to thinking. Um, there's <laughs> lots of different sports drinks out there. Oh yes, you know there's there's all sorts of ones. Gatorade ain't in the Bible. I can just start to tell you uh, that is not going to be in the list that I'm including. But okay, you're you're thinking properly. So okay, good. Uh, one of these sports drinks, these are brands, is not in the Bible. Oh, this sounds fun. Two of them are, one of them is not. Two of them are. Two of them are, and one of them is not. Okay, okay. so right. Prime, Propel, Body Armor. <laughs> Those are all sports. I know. I know. Like, my brain's weird, okay? I understand that, but... <laughs> <laughs> One of those is not in the Bible, but two of them are. But you're not asking, are those capital letter, you know, Right. It's not the name of the company. Names. The word is okay. in the Bible. Gotcha. Prime, Propel, Body Armor. This is a little tricky, I think. What do you think? <laughs> H? What's your gut tell me, Michael? <laughs> my gut tells me Propel's not in there. That's just my gut. <laughs> yeah. But also, at the same time, Prime sounds a little fishy. Prime rib? Optimus Prime? That's um, kind of what I first like. <laughs> Transformers. Dun, dun, dun. Well, I was saying, you what know, we where in the Bible would it say, you know, he's Prime, prime for this. Prime or, Minister? Or this is Prime. Well, they don't have those then, did they? Prime Minister. In their day? Um... The prime. Do not believe they had prime ministers sacrifice. Like, uh, Babylonians did. Propel. Oh. <laughs> is that what the Rab Shaka is translated to? I don't know. What's uh, your gut say? Do you have a gut? Body armor, I'm pretty sure, is in the Bible. It sounds like it should be. Yeah. Put on your body armor stuff and all that. Yeah. Is that deodorant? Or they wore uh, body armor. Propel just sounds kind of kind of odd, but now I've been tricked a lot by these words. Yeah, they sound kind of odd, and then they're in there. Propel. I mean, that means to throw, yeah, move forward, uh, something like that. Prime. Did the fish propel Jonah out of his? (laughs) Did David propel a stone? Yeah. Prime. Propel sounds fishy because of the way the word sounds, but prime sounds fishy because what would prime be used to? in any of that biblical language. See, this is the kind of mini litmus test I go through, litmus test I go through in my mind when it comes to words. Yep. Does that word sound like it would have, would have been used then? I can see where they all three could have been, but one of Watch, them... Watch, it'll be body armor. It'll be, right, the, one, it'll be, be. The, it'll be the one that's Absolutely. like... We're like, no, that surely... Absolutely, because if you're going to look stupid on any Addy, you're going to look real <laughs> stupid. Uh, I, I'm, I don't have a, a heavy lean one way or the other on those, but I, I feel like it's one of those two. Yeah. It's not any and Audi, it's any or Audi. You have to pick one. That's of correct. Them. Good. It's a good, good catch right there. I mean, Prime <laughs> is the only. Propel, I could see a word like to be thrown. Yep. Pushed in front of, and they probably they use catapults and stuff. Probably mm-hmm. still in those days, yep. or was that medieval? Would they have had those in biblical times? Catapults? I believe, I believe they did. Yeah, of some sort. Is catapult in the Bible? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Prime. No, because cat's not in the Bible. Remember? That's true. We've Already proven that over and over. Yeah. I, I feel like it's prime. Be a dog or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Prime. Okay. I, I, Do you think? Yeah, that's that's the word probably that. Seems like it doesn't fit. Right. Are we in? Yeah. We, so in that that's an Audi. Is that the way we should answer that? Yeah. Prime, prime is an Prime, prime is, is the Audi in the Bible. That's an Audi. And the others are Innies. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So Prime is found. Of course mm-hmm. it is. In right. Job twenty nine four in various translations. Right. Uh, <laughs> body armor is only found in Jeremiah fifty one three with the Lexham English Bible. Right. Uh, Propel is not in there. Mm. Really. And it was to the, the one best that of my knowledge. Yep. Yeah, I, I researched yep. several translations. Propel. To the best of my knowledge, Propel is not in there. Right. Interesting. Well, it's just, it's just. But anyway, we're wrong. I really, I really <laughs> didn't care. I just wanted to eat a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of which, uh, yeah. both of those good in your Audis. Yep. I love in your Audis. They're always good. It's always fun uh, to do. I can't wait till people start doing this at parties and we hear back that people are doing well, this when the board game comes out. It's it's I'm getting there. <laughs> I move slowly. He put the yes in me some time ago. Right. You get that? I did. Okay, we'll take a break, come back and uh try out Margie Mahar's Marlaces. molasses cookies. Molasses cookies. We'll be back. Oh wow, what a great contestant and a fine sport today on Any or Audi, America's almost favorite new game show. Study up, future guest people. You're next in the hot seat for Any or Audi. <laughs> hey, we're back. You, you miss out on the good stuff sometimes, but listen, uh, uh, another great day on Mike the Baptist. Good conversation, guys. I really appreciate that. And uh, uh, it's not that I'm not thrilled about the conversation, but I am thrilled about, about the cookies. These. these are molasses cookies. Baked up special for us to do a taste test here on Mike the Baptist by Margie Mahar. And so uh, the way this works is, well, we never really figured out how it works. But we just well, taste something and tell you what we think. I'm a little concerned. Okay. Because, you know, we talked about words that, you know, we can't use anymore. Yes. And I'm afraid mm-hmm. that when I eat this, mm-hmm. my tongue is going to slap me stupid. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll be ready to stop you with something. I don't know what. But. Wasn't that a cookout that we used to have at Temple? Slap your mama, smack your mama, smack, smack your mama. Smack your mama, rib cook off. Yeah, kind of miss that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, maybe we'll do it again someday. Uh, so here's what we're going to do: we're going to taste Margie's molasses cookies, and then we're going to tell you uh, what we think about them. We're going to give them a review <laughs> on this professional program. Oh, oh, that's oh still, man, I, it's not. It's still good. Mm-hmm. It's still moist. See, it's just real soft. It's got that little sugar on the top. Molasses flavor in there. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, tongue gonna slap you stupid. That them's good right there. <laughs> H and I were talking. Jason has not experienced it, but the Archway Cookie Company makes a molasses cookie. I don't see them in the stores locally anymore, but they make a molasses cookie, and I could eat so many of those, it just hurt. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> them right there, I could eat a whole bag of them right there. Margie, if you're listening, mm-hmm. you need to market these. Mm. But Margie, <clears throat> <clears throat> I see now why uh, Bob is not anorexic. Exactly. <laughs> So, Margie, before you market these, he is hypoglycemic. <laughs> it's important in marketing to make sure before you go to the expense of putting them out there that you thoroughly have them reviewed. Mm. And it would be in your best interest to send some more of these sometime and let us do this again. That way you'll know that, like, if it's a different day, we're in a different mood, and we try it, and they're still really great, then you probably are okay to go ahead and do it. I I've wouldn't do a, that first. I would go ahead and let us do another panel before you do that. I've got a great commercial for her. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's just the sound of us opening the bag mm-hmm. and then basically just silence and chewing for mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. 10 to 15 mm-hmm. seconds. Mm-hmm. Yep. My, uh, my grandson, Avery, when he was little – in a hot chair eating well, as he was eating this is this is how it sounded mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he was just thoroughly enjoying his food but that's kind of what these cookies were okay good stuff isn't it 
It's really good, and I'm going to finish this bag. There's three in the bag, but I'm going to finish them uh, after we finish the program, which we're about to do. Do I have to wait? No, you don't have to wait. Thanks for being with us on Mike the Baptist. Thanks to Jason Riccardi for another good, fun episode. Always entertaining. <laughs> he's not if if you're listening, he's not saying anything because he's got his mouth full. And his Whole beard. Club. He's got a half a cookie in his beard. <laughs> Whole club. H.D. Jones. Hey, good to be here again. Good to have you. Good stories as always. And uh, a little calmer right. on the front porch right. than sometimes, but you can't, you know, you can't uh, be insane all the time, I guess. But anyway, good to have you back. Good talk. I'm Mike DeBaptist. Thanks for joining us. Come back next week. I think the three of us are on next week, too, mm-hmm. in our rotating schedule. And uh, Jason will speak next week unless Margie sends another round of cookies or something. Anyway, remember folks, we're all just Christians. Mm-hmm. Trying not mm-hmm. to cuss. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>